Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining today for our MA Fine Art Computational Arts course intro. Uh, I'm just going to give it a few moments just to allow everyone to come in from the waiting room and join the event and then we'll get started with some introductions and how the session today is going to work. Okay, so I can see there's a couple of people coming in, so I'll give it a moment or two. Okay, so let me start with an introduction to myself. So my name's Hannah. I'm the Student Recruitment and Marketing Manager at Camberwell. And today I'm going to give you an introduction to the college, talk to you a little bit about uh, the application process, entry requirements, and then I'll hand over to Max to introduce himself. Max, are you there? Oh, sorry. sorry. I got <laughs> <laughs> Sorry everyone, my name is Max Doby, I'm the Pathway Leader for MA Fine Art Computation Arts and I'll pass over to Jessica to introduce themselves. Hi, uh, I'm Jessica, I'm a uh, soon-to-be graduate, I've just finished a course this month and I'm uh, a graduate of MA Fine Art on at Camberwell College on the Computational Arts Pathway. Great. And so between the three of us, hopefully we're going to give you a great insight into Camberwell, what it's like to study with us and the course itself. Now, whilst all the presentations are happening, all your microphones are muted, your webcams are not visible to either us or anyone else in the audience. Um, you are very welcome to ask questions. We'd really love if you did that, but please just type them into the Q&A box. So you should be able to see that in your menu bar. And what we'll do is we'll pick them up at the end and we'll answer any questions then. Uh, I will be sending you a follow up email after the event and it'll include a recording of today's session. And also I'll make sure that any uh, kind of the useful resources or anything that we signpost that we think would be useful for you, for you afterwards will be included in that. OK, so I'm going to get started with a bit of an introduction to the college and the application process. OK, so Camberwell College of Arts, we are part of the University of Arts London, so UAL. And UAL is made up of six separate colleges and each of our colleges has a different specialism or a different approach to their subject. Now, across those six colleges, we've got around about 20,000 students. So that's a huge creative network for you to come and join. And once again this year, we've been ranked second in the world for art and design in the QS World Rankings. But Camberwell itself is a really unique place to study. Uh, Camberwell has a really long and rich history. Uh, we celebrated being 125 years old and Camberwell was purpose built as an art and design school. And if you come and visit us, you'll see that reflected in the architecture of the building, the original Victorian building. We've got the brutalist frontage to the main entrance. And in recent years, we've also added a new academic building, which houses some of our technical facilities and new library studio spaces. So as well as having that long and rich history, we're also very much built for the future as well. And our ethos as a college is about rethinking current practices and cultivating new. And we embrace both traditional craftsmanship and new digital technology as well. And whilst you're with us, we want to encourage students to find their own path and really have the freedom to explore their individuality through their practice. In terms of our location, so we are based in South East London and we're right at the heart of a creative community. Uh, on doorstep of college, we've got galleries, project spaces, studios, pop-ups. There's a really thriving local art scene. And the college is very much part of that as well. As well as that art scene, there's lots going on socially as well. Places to eat, drink, lots of great independent businesses in both Camberwell and Peckham. And the college does have a campus feel because we have four halls of residence that are all within walking distance of the college. And one of those is pictured here, Gardens House. That's the closest to the college, being a 30 second walk from the front door. And being based South East London, we also have great transport links to central London as well. So you can really uh, take advantage of the amenities of the city as well. Now, as well as being part of our Camberwell College community, uh, we also have the postgraduate community, which runs across the university. And that is set up to help our postgraduate taught students and also our research students collaborate, network and create together. And there's lots of different ways in which they encourage our students to do that. One of those is the events programme. So they run things like curator led tours of exhibitions, visits to artist studios, industry spaces, also skills sharing and knowledge exchanges. 
So there's plenty of opportunities to network across the postgraduate community at UAL. And if you're interested in having a little look at what's happening with that community, uh, you can have a look at the postgraduate community page on our website. And that has some stories from students and events that have been happening. And also give them a follow across social as well. Now, in terms of support services for our students, so we have our student services. Now, all of these services are based at Camberwell, but we also have a central hub in High Holborn. Uh, so students can go to central London and attend these services away from their home college if they prefer. And our student services include our student advice service, our academic support service, counselling, health advice, multi-faith chaplaincy, and also our disability support service. All of these services are completely confidential and free of charge to our students. And some of the advisory services you can actually use before you join us as a student. So if you were, maybe would like to some information around financing your studies, you can talk to our financial advisors. Or if you're an international student and you are maybe uh, looking at visas for studying with us, we do have immigration specialists that can support you with that. We also have a careers and employability service that work across the university, but we have representatives for each of our colleges and they work with both our students and graduates on their personal and professional development. As some of their services include mentoring, there's lots of opportunities to showcase and exhibit work. Uh, we have something called Not Just a Shop, which is a physical retail unit in High Holborn, but also an online shop and students can apply to have their work stocked and sold through that. Uh, they also do different workshops, drop-ins, so it's a great uh, service for you to be able to engage with. They also have something called Arts Temps, which a lot of our students join when they enrol. Arts Temps is a kind of in-house temping agency, so it means that students can pick up part-time flexible work to support themselves alongside their study. Now let's move on to talk about entry requirements and the application process. So if you are looking to join up one of our MA courses, we would be looking for a BA degree or an equivalent academic qualification. And what we want is for you to demonstrate your ability in your chosen subject area. And you'll do that through your personal statement and through your portfolio of work as well. If English is not your first language, you'll need to provide evidence at enrolment of an English language qualification. So that means you can apply before you've completed that qualification. And for our MA Fine Art Computational Arts course, we'd be looking for an IELTS of 6.5 with 5.5 in each of the different skills. Now, if you maybe have a different type of English language qualification that's not IELTS, it may well meet our entry requirements. And we have a full up to date list available on our English language page of the website. Fees for the 24-25 academic year. So if you're looking to join us next year. Uh, for the MA, it's if you're a home fee payer, it's 13,330. And if you're an EU or international fee payer, it's 28,570. Now, it is possible to pay your tuition fee in instalments. So it means that rather than paying in one big lump sum, you can split that across the time that you're studying with us. Now, the funding opportunities are available. If you have studied at UAL before and you completed your course, uh, you may be entitled to the UAL graduate discount, which is 20% off your tuition fees. Also, we do have some uh, postgraduate scholarships, the first one being our UAL home scholarship. So if you're a home fee payer, we have 185 £7,000 fee waivers available. And there are two routes of eligibility. One is means tested and one is via application. And there's two rounds of funding. So you can see there's two deadlines here. One is in July and one is slightly later in November. For our international students, we have uh, 215 £7,000 fee waivers. And we also have four £50,000 scholarships. Now, those scholarships are to cover tuition fees and also include accommodation at one of our UAL halls of residence. And also they will cover uh, contribute towards your living costs whilst you study with us as well. There is also the postgraduate master's loan. So for those of you who may have taken out an undergraduate student loan, this works in a very similar way. You can loan up to £12,167, but unlike the undergraduate loan, it is paid directly to you. It's not paid to the university. So you can choose how you manage that loan, whether you want to put it towards tuition fees, living costs, split, 
it's up to you to manage that money. Um, it's paid to you in three separate installments throughout your study. And you start to repay it once you've finished your course and you hit the earnings threshold. If you have taken out an undergraduate student loan, then you repay both your undergraduate and your postgraduate student loan at the same time. There are eligibility and residency criteria that apply for this particular loan. And one of the key ones is that if you have studied a postgraduate uh, qualification previously or an equivalent level, and you, even though if you've self-funded it, you would not be eligible for this loan. I think one of the most useful tools that we have is our fees and funding calculator, and I'll link to that in the follow-up email. You can enter your course of interest, your circumstances, income, and that calculator will then suggest to you what loans, bursaries and scholarships you may well be eligible for with us. OK, and the application process. So we are looking for a personal statement, uh, which is a maximum of 500 words. And what we want you to include in that is to tell us why you're interested in the course, your research intentions, tell us how any kind of experience or qualifications can support your application. You'll then be asked to provide a digital portfolio. So all of the application process is done online. And we've got lots and lots of guidance about what to include, what a digital portfolio is, and also how to upload to Pebblepad, which is where you, uh, the platform you will be submitting your digital portfolio on. There is also a short video task, and this is just a two to three minute video uh, helping us learn about you, your research intentions, and this is submitted alongside your portfolio. So it's just building up these different layers, helping us get to know you and your practice and intentions. And then you'll be invited to an interview, which is online. It'll be a short 15 to 20 minute interview, which will be booked via the UAL portal. Now, the UAL portal, you will set up an account when you start your application. So you apply via the course page. If you go to the course page, you'll see an apply now tab. You enter your email, create a password, and then your account is set up. And it's through that UAL portal that you will submit all of these different pieces of your application and it is also where the final outcome of your application will be communicated. Deadlines, so we have two rounds of application deadlines for our master's courses. The first deadline is coming up on Wednesday the 13th of December and then we also have a round two deadline which is Wednesday the 3rd of April 2024. Now after today if you still would like to get to know more about the college and the course as I mentioned, we've got lots of portfolio advice available and we'll link to that in the follow up email. The course page on the website, that's where you apply. We'll be running monthly campus tours. So if you'd like to come and visit, have a look around. You can book onto one of those. But in the new year, we will also be having our postgraduate on site open days. So that'll be an opportunity for you to come and visit the college and have a much more in depth experience than just a tour. It means you can meet the course team, you can talk to current students, see studio spaces, look at facilities. So if you'd like to book onto one of those, keep an eye out, we'll be sending the dates soon. And we also run some discovery webinars, which cover things like our accommodation services, portfolio advice, and also just talk about the wider studying experience at UAL. Okay. So that's enough from me. I'm now gonna hand over to Max. He's gonna talk you through the course overview. Brilliant. Thanks, Hannah. Let me just bring up my screen. And I'll share sound as well, because I've got some moving images. Can you see that OK? Yeah, that's lovely. Super. So yeah, thanks, Hannah. Um, my name is Max. I'm the pathway leader for the MA Fine Art Computational Arts course at Camberwell. And I'm just going to start my timer because I want to talk about the course, give you an overview, um, give you a sense of the structure of the teaching staff, of the content um, and the type of culture on the course. And then after that, Jessica Brauner is a very recent, soon to be graduate of the course, and she'll be talking about her experience with the course. So yeah, MA Fine Art Computational Arts has been going for, this is its third year. Um, so it's a relatively new addition to the fine art program at Camberwell. 
Um, and whatever stage in life you're at at the moment, you probably have your own motivations for doing an, an, a postgraduate fine art master's and you're probably looking around and thinking about where you want to be or what you want to get from this um, program or from any, any MA fine art program. So I'd really encourage you to, I mean, have a think about what you're wanting to get out of this program and then you know, look around and talk to as many universities and colleges and tutors as you can and students or ex-students to really get a sense of what each course is like. I think some key things that um, an MA in fine art gives you and that we try to really emphasize here at, at Camberwell is, well, creative practice, kind of obviously you're realizing your creative potential through um, experimentation in workshops and studios and really getting a confidence in technical execution and practice within your exploration of your inquiry. Another aspect is critical thinking and developing a literacy around and a vocabulary around research and academic research and where that sits in a public context. Um, collaborative, we really nurture collaboration uh, between the different pathways on this fine art pathway, a course, sorry, um, and also within the diff within the university, within the college, and creating a network that's going to support you, not just while you're here, but hopefully post graduation too. That's really important. And then a final thing is professional autonomy, and I think this really feeds into the kind of independence and self directed nature of an MA program where you are going to be expected to doing a lot of development through independent self-directed work. Um, and this is something that is a very useful life skill across all uh, sectors. So yeah, I just wanted to also emphasize professional autonomy. I think MA, MAs in fine art generally could be quite good at, at developing that. So yeah, this computational arts at Camberwell, we explore digital practices and emerging technology in fine art. We um, are both interested in emerging digital processes and also experimental modes of practice. And over the 15 month MA, the aim is to support you in the development of a substantial body of creative work that is challenged and underpinned through critical analysis, reflection and contextualization. Throughout the course of the MA, you will be engaging in various methods to expand and explore how you manifest your inquiry through various practical means. Um, I'll talk more about the workshops and the technical support, but within computational arts, we try to be really heterogeneous in our approach to digital learning and technology and think about computation quite broadly um, from its in conceptual terms to mechanical terms to technical terms, but also doing workshops in emerging technology in 3D modeling, augmented reality, creative coding, physical computing and machine learning, but also engaging with computation through the more, let's say, uh, physical uh, traditional workshops like ceramics or etching or print, which all you have access to within Campbell College. So here's a picture of the overview of the 15 month program. You have these three units. Each one has a separate intention um, and direction about your development. The first one is really about establishing your key theoretical field and developing various modes of practice to support that inquiry. Um, and getting settled within the environment in Camberwell, becoming familiar with all the different technical workshops and developing a community that way. The second unit, we really try and expand your uh, modes of working within different institutions. So start working outside of the university a bit more, uh, engaging with archives and collections and thinking about how your work as an artist can be produced and shown or displayed or work in cultural environments that aren't just the art school environment. And then uh, in unit three, it's all about making public. So really uh, presenting your work and your research in various public forms uh, through exhibitions, through events, um, and through various disseminations of your research, where I'll talk a little bit more about 
So that's an overview of our term time. Um, it's quite intense. It's quite rigorous. There's a lot of exhibitions. There's a lot of opportunities to uh, get feedback on your work, regular crits, um, regular conversations with your pe peers, regular feedback, regular check technical workshops, and a lot of shows. So it's um, it's not something that can be thought of as a kind of light. It's quite an intensive period, and I think Jessica will probably echo that. So here's the picture of our ecosystem. Um, we try to really support. I'm really, uh, I really care about how the community and the ecosystem of the students and how they interface with different students on the program. I've already said that we have this interesting structural approach where we are a, a pathway within a fine art community. So there's uh, currently 14 uh, computational art students, but they sit within a much wider program of sculpture, photography, printmaking, uh, painting, um, and drawing. And we have regular lectures with them, cross course crits, uh, exhibitions. So that's the whole MA of Compact. You're part of a much wider program, which I think fosters really fertile conversations and shows that diversity of disciplines. It's, it's brilliant to be in crits with students from drawing and sculpture and photography and all feeding back on each other's work and really helping it grow and develop. So I think that's a really strong aspect of the course, this particular program. Um, we also have relationships. We share the same technical areas with the BA students. And um, so we, we kind of see them quite regularly, sometimes go on school trips together, uh, offsite exhibition visits. Um, you have access to the Creative Computing Institute upstairs as a student on computational arts. You can use some of their technical um, facilities and book te technical tutorials with some of their technical staff. So it's a it's quite a broad ecosystem of places where you can find a community and a network of practitioners that have similar interests to you that are going to support you on your journey. Here's a little snapshot of what a week looks like on computational arts. Um, we have regular contact points on a Tuesday, um, a cross pathway lecture on a Wednesday afternoon, and a, a tech workshop on a Thursday morning. And then it, this is suddenly, but we do an offsite exhibition visit every other week too. So we try and go see an exhibition in London in the field of computational arts or media art or digital every other week, um, which I think is really helpful to just identify and grow what the community is of digital practice and computational artists within London and further afield. And here's a, a list of our staff or current staff, people that teach into the course, technical staff, um, varying skill sets. I really try and support the diversity of practice and inquiry on the course. Um, we really try to be very open about our uses and approaches with technology. Um, here's a little video from a workshop given by Ellen Adair that I think Jessica was in where you, they created drawing machines so really trying to be quite immediate with our approaches to using technology in some sessions. There's a video of this drawing machine as it does its thing. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the list of uh, visiting lectures that you have every week, which sums some of that's based around practice um, and artists talking about their work and their research, but then, some of that's geared around professional toolkit and professional development. So trying to just ensure that you have the skills and the knowledge to be able to support yourself after this course. So it's a, these weekly lectures change, but you get a kind of both inputs from both sides. Here's a nice video of uh, some of the students at the photographer's gallery in one of their exhibition visits, uh, experiencing some augmented reality coming out of the photographer's gallery. So yeah, there's, I've mentioned research quite a few times and there's something about this course, which is another unique feature which is that we, we, we take this research as practice approach. So we really value creatively 
disseminating your research to the public. So throughout the MA, you'll be asked when you start, if you start on the course, you'll be asked to immediately start writing on an MA project proposal, which you then use as a kind of framework to guide your inquiry. And you're developing your practice that supports your inquiry as a kind of practice-based research, which then obviously lines you up for research degrees if you wanted to continue and think about doing a PhD and think about practice-based research do this research is practice we try and really um, lay the groundwork for that being something that you're comfortable with as a practitioner but that means that the various things but I think a really good way to demonstrate that is the research festival that we have at the very end of your um, MA and Jessica might talk about this quite because it's just happened last weekend and she was performing in it on Sunday. But a research festival is an event in which um, you disseminate your research to the public through a publication or a workshop or a lecture or a screening or an essay. So it's kind of up to you and the students cross pathway work on creating this festival to celebrate and communicate their research to the public in really interesting and extraordinary ways. So this is in addition to the exhibitions that you have throughout the MA but it's I think it's really amazing to end on something where you are synthesizing all the research and thinking about how you're going to communicate that research to the public so that there's this we're valuing both the research and the making equally we submit we assess your work through these regular public exhibition moments and through an online platform that you'll create while you're here. So we're keen on you creating a online platform that you can then use after the course to showcase your work. And um, you use that online platform for your submission. So you document your work and document your process and also add all your reflective writing and use that online platform to uh, submit for each unit. So there's no like physical sketchbooks or uh, yeah, other formats, it's, it all goes on your online platform. And here's some exhibitions that we've had recently or this year. Yeah, this was in April and May. Um, Jessica might mention this is an exhibition we had at a barge house down on the South Bank. Again, cross pathway, really well attended in the centre of London. Um, here's an image of Jessica's work. Uh, in that space we're in the top building of this um abandoned warehouse that felt very haunted and spooky and had a yeah had a strong vibe but um jessica's work for example hung really well in that space Looked really good um it's a more example of student work zinland has been doing a project around her family and creating these family portraits through conversations with family members and turning them into these 3d models Here's a summary of the different types of activity that you engage in. Um, yeah, I think I've mentioned all of these. Weekly seminars, technical workshops, cross pathway lectures, lots of moments to present your work and get feedback both on, both on your research and your practical work. And obviously tutorials. There's some more videos from workshops in the course or different sessions. Some images from a projection mapping workshop. And yeah, some more images from the every other week we go visit a show or a museum. And I think this is a really important part of identifying practitioners within your field. OK, so I'm not going to play the student. There's a video here on students work, but it's actually available online. And just to save time, have a look at it. It's an interview with Titas and Feb who were stu two students on the first uh, year of the course, speaking about their experience and what kind of work they've made and how the course has supported their development. 
So yeah, things that students have gone on to do so far. Um, like I said, it's a we've only been going for three years, which makes the course quite nice and small. And there's a nice community um, with with the students and the ex students. Peter Ash, uh, is now working for a theatre company where uh, she was making a lot of these um, videos using 3D animated characters in Blender and those skills quite quickly got picked up and she's been um, using that for a theatre company called Big House Theatre Company. Uh, she also received a Venice residency while she was a student on the course. Um, Beb and Ray have collaborated together um, to produce, to do a kind of curatorial artist curatorial platform called Tadu Art Center. And Jessica Brauner is a very recent graduate, so a uh, question mark, but um, I just want to put her there because she's going to speak to you after me. But I think it's also shown with Beb and Ray's Tadu Art Center. So there's connections and networks that, that are happening between people on the course, which I think is really healthy and exciting. And yeah, that's me. I'm here's all the way. So you're, you know, you're you're having a think. And thank you so much for coming and checking out what this course is about. Um, these are lots of different ways in which you can kind of get a get a taste of what's going on. You can obviously email me and I'll get back to you if you have any questions. We have an Instagram account that you can follow and kind of get course updates, see what we're up to. We also have a research group. So there's somewhere where um, we share reading and references that we use for thematic seminars that we happen that we have so that's also a good way to get a, say, a taste of some of the different theories and subjects that we're engaging with um, within the discourse on the computational arts pathway and then lastly there's a this is very close to my heart there's a recently created as part of the research festival we have an online journal in which we share and publish students research so um, this is not just computational arts, but all the different fine art pathways. But that's we've just published issue two and has a really diverse and exciting and interesting collection of um, research that's contextualizing different students' work on the course. So uh, quite often students do it as a kind of reflective essay, contextualizing their work within different theoretical disciplines and and yeah, check it out. It's 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 very it's very nice, and I, I I'm I'm keen for more people for it to become a more um, visible platform. But that's one of the many platforms that you could contribute to as part of the research festival and towards the end of your MA. Um, sorry, I'm conscious I've talked very fast, but I'll hand over to. Are we doing questions at the end, aren't we? So I'll hand over to Jessica now and stop sharing. If everyone's got a picture of those of this slide. <laughs> I'll send the links in the follow-up email as well. Nice one. Thank you. Okay, hey, over to you, Jessica. Thank you so much uh, to you both uh, for the introduction and your presentations. At the end of Hannah's, my Wi-Fi really unexpectedly cut out. That's never happened before, um, but hopefully it will be fine. I just thought I'd say that just in case the worst happens. Um, so I'll just share my screen. Um, Great. Hopefully I can just minimize that. Um, right. So uh, I was introduced previously, but um, just in case, uh, hang on, I'll just minimize this little window if I can, because there's a little window. One second. Thank you. Sorry, I'll just play that again. Yeah, so I was introduced, but um, in case anyone new is joining at this moment, my name is Jessica Brauner. Um, I am a soon-to-be graduate. I finished a course this month, uh, the Computational uh, Arts Pathway of the Fine Art MA course at Camberwell, and I started the course in September of 2022. Um, maybe these links can also be shared just in case anybody wants to see more of uh, my work or more of me. Um, before I started the MA Fine Art course at UAL Camberwell College, I had just finished a BA in Fine Art at the Arts University Bournemouth. One of the technicians uh, there who had helped me a lot with my art practice actually had studied at UAL Camberwell College. And my BA was also visited by the artist Janet Thomas, who is a tutor on the computational arts pathway of the MA Fine Art course at UAL Camberwell. So for me, it, that was these were clear reasons for going for this um, course pathway on this course. Um, I really admire her video work and it felt like a great fit for me. 
I also chose Camberwell specifically out of the UAL colleges because of the um, pathways on the course and the facilities. I felt like they were the most suited to the practice that I was doing and I was growing more and more interested in uh, making art about emerging technologies and joining the computational arts pathway. One of the uh, studio rooms on campus I've used for my own practice that you can see on this slide has a great green screen, different lighting options available, including different colored lights and plenty of wall space for projections. And there's also a really great sound recording booth on site, which is relevant to my own practice, but there's tons of other facilities, including a 3D printer, a dark room for photography and lots more. Um, so the computational arts pathway of the fine art course does encourage students to, as you've heard Max say, uh, think about computation, about technology in lots of very different ways. Um, for me, I found that making work about AI, meaning artificial intelligence, gave my work a new depth that I wasn't expecting. I've mainly worked with generative artificial intelligence programs, including the chatbot ChatGPT, which has been trained with data scraped from the internet to write texts, and uh, stable diffusion AI technology, which can generate images from harvested online images on data sets. The best way to give you an introduction to my current art practice, interest, materials and processes would be to just read my artist statement, which is something that the students work on and update during the course with each unit. So my current artist statement reads, my playful utilization of Brechtian performance techniques is united with the ethereal presence of sophisticated AI generation technology in my art practice. My artwork shapeshifts from the humorous to the frightening, I shapeshift along with it, embodying multiple characters through costume, makeup, and multi-rolling. When composing my own visual language, I edit and layer moving images together into videos, including footage of animals, the edited visual records of my performances, and stable diffusion AI video rendering of my footage. These videos are then captured in different stage sets and live performances. I have explored the popularization of contemporary AI technologies online, by approaching AI systems as an artistic collaborator, co-devising my creative narratives with the help of ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion. I gather ChatGPT's transcripts, Shakespearean narratives, and my own creative writing to script the foundation of my artworks. And this collaging methodology has allowed for the assemblage of poetic parallels between the occult practice presented in Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, and the contemporary landscape surrounding the usage of AI today. The Jacobean beliefs regarding spirits and demons are additionally compared with the way we anthropomorphize contemporary AI models through my research. The work contrasts anxieties circulating the development of AI technologies under hubristic, colonial and patriarchal influences with the whimsical magical absurdities of machine thinking and learning. That's quite a lot to unpack in that artist statement, but I think it becomes a little bit clearer as I'll explain uh, a bit more about my experience on the course and my research. So uh, for the course, um, you've heard Max talk about it already, but we have to complete a body of work and artist statement supporting work, research and reflection on our practice for each of the units. Uh, when I joined in unit one, I was making very different work to the work that I've made at the end of the course in unit three, which is great because everybody loves to progress in their art practice over the course of a course. Um, I was interested in feminist mythologies in unit one, so I was using the figure of Medusa as a metaphor for exploring the idea of perspective and psychoanalysis regarding looking, gazes and sexuality. I made paper mache props and costumes to represent the character of Medusa, and I animated a clay puppet to represent Perseus in a video retelling of the classical mythological narrative. Uh, this was partially inspired by the work of the visiting sculpture artist to Camberwell, uh, Kira Frigi. Uh, we finished unit one with an exhibition of our miniature artworks at the Philae Gal Gallery in Murray Grove in London, which was a really rewarding way of saying goodbye to the first unit. I made a small FIMO clay version of Medusa in the style of Botticelli's Birth of Venus, which is quite amusing. Um, I really enjoyed making work for unit one, um, but my feedback on the project sort of made me realize that I could partake in the conversation surrounding the sort of technological landscape of art and the contemporary feminism landscape of art a bit more effectively. So things really changed for the better for me in unit two, um, for engaging in the subject of artificial intelligence in the Stanley Kubrick archive, 
my work to it took a new direction with the aim of exploring that subject. Um, the trip to this archive at UAL's London College of Communication was actually part of a series of course pathway trips for a project exploring archives and how to undertake research as artists in archives and inspired by collections. We also visited the London Metropolitan Archives and the Horniman Museum. I thought about Donna Haraway's descriptions and definitions concerning the cyborg in her cyber feminist text, A Cyborg Manifesto, in which she describes them as creatures simultaneously animal and machine, who populate worlds ambiguously natural and crafted. This led me to the character of Ariel from Shakespeare's The Tempest. I contemplated how this character might help me represent a hybridized entity in my work symbolizing AI. And in an original copy of Shakespeare's first book of plays, his first folio, including The Tempest, the character list defines Ariel as an airy spirit, implying a changeable being made of air. Ariel was a character that can be interpreted as transcending other dualities and categories, as Haraway had theorised a cyborg might, from the unlikely context of Jacobean England's depictions of fairies and magic. So I made my own Ariel costume, out of paper mache and filmed footage of myself in the costume before I fed the footage through an image generating AI. Uh, this AI generation platform on Google Colab was introduced to me through talking with one of the university technicians, James Stringer, and using his advice and the YouTube tutorial he recommended to me, I was actually able to do AI video rendering, which reproduced the frames I had made with the compositions the AI had generated to match the frames of my video as a guide. I then edited the frames together and experimented with the footage on Adobe Premiere Pro. I think this will give you a good visual representation of what that means with my original footage and then the AI generated footage that matches the frames. I also engaged with the chatbot chat GPT in my unit two practice, asking the AI generated generative tool to reproduce um, creative writing from the perspective of the spirit, uh, Ariel, fused with an AI model. This interpretation developed into one evolving fictional en entity that explored the complex power dynamics between human beings and artificial intelligence, and between myself and the AI as a collaborator, as well as between the feminine and the patriarchal. So as Max said, we got to show our Unit 2 work in the Barge House Gallery on London's South Bank, which was a fantastic experience. <laughs> I've always wanted to exhibit on the South Bank ever since I was a child, so that was quite a big deal for me. Um, I presented my video on a fireproof uh, voile sheet of translucent fabric, which gave my video a ghostly effect in the dark attic space of the gallery, which I felt really, really proud of. So in Unit 3, um, I expanded the ideas I had explored in Unit 2 to include live performance in my practice. Using Brechtian theatre techniques, I explored a narrative in which I embodied Prospero, a character who's also in Shakespeare's The Tempest, who controls Ariel, as well as myself performing as Ariel alongside it. Um, the relationship between these two characters served as a metaphor for human relationships with AI. A uh, in a video installation and live performance I presented for the summer MA exhibition at UAL's Camberwell campus, I used projection mapping, a technique which we learned from a course workshop, to produce um, to project sorry my video onto a set piece that also used the translucent fabric that I had used in Unit 2. We additionally made uh, plenty of gallery visits during the course, as Max has already said, including exhibitions that featured lighting effects, um, such as the exhibition Thin Air at the Beans event space in London, and a video installation work uh, by Sarah Z at Peckham Station, which really helped me realise what was possible to achieve with my own work. Um, I've got a little video clip of what I did for that exhibition. Oh, yeah, I think it was did you know? Did you know that you signed? You signed. You signed long before. There is no exceptions. The millions suck love. Not very old wine. That's a good fellow and very old. What would my boots and master? Here I am. 
Val reminded me that it was your last service in worldly form, and I must give you in such a novel trick. I think you can you can tell how much fun I had doing that. So I'll move on to the uh, last slide. So to mark the end of um, our course, we had a research festival event, as Max mentioned, and uh, that was very recent for me. For the event, I made another video which compared the Jacobean conceptions of witchcraft and the occult to the presence of AI and our use of it um, and my use of it during the art course. Uh, I had the viewers vote for an ending to the video using an ancient Greek voting method with uh, black and white pebbles. Um, so this was a very rewarding experience. And I think that my work has taught me to be brave enough to um, embrace both uh, immersive technologies, but also audience participation and um, performance. I guess that my advice to any prospective students would just be to be courageous when exploring new artistic territory embrace difficult ethical issues, but also stay playful and experimental because you never know what you might learn. So that's me done. <laughs> Thank you for watching that.